Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to work on the Crochet Tilt-A-Whirl Afghan. This is a really neat concept and I love the look of this afghan. So let's begin looking at this in more detail. But first let's listen to this real quick. This video has sound alerts added. When you hear this sound, it will be your signal that the segment is finishing up. Press stop and crochet the instructions and then press play again to continue along in your project. So here's our pattern and the squares are really quite neat. It's a corner to corner design. So we start off in one corner and get bigger and then we end up getting a, a more narrow on the other side. So a few things to know about these uh, corner to corners that each one of them has the striping. So it may be a visual optical illusion for you once you're looking at this you're thinking well, where exactly are you crocheting. Just look at each one of these squares as individuals and it's how that it's positioned and sewn together. Now I did zoom in the photo because I have access to the high uh, definition uh, photos and they have used black yarn in order to sew all these together. So it's actually really kind of neat because you really don't see that even in areas that you would think that you would. It's not very obvious and I even zoomed in on that. So it's not even a camera trick. It's actually quite awesome. So let me just show you another quick uh, photo. It's more of a blown up version just like you see. So every one of these squares so you see that it's got the striping then it goes to the blue and then you're done. This one here you can just see it's striping to the yellow. So there's uh, three types of squares. There's a striping to the blue, striping to the yellow and striping to the white and that's what makes it all um, uh, that makes a lot of sense. So you just have to look at the overall photography of it in order to see your positioning. Of course these color options are optional as well. To play today you need your Karen one pound yarn and you need two balls of every one of the colors that we have here and the border is actually quite simple too which I'll explain when we get there. You'll need a six millimeter size J crochet hook in order to play. Just one quick note before we go is that when you have the striping effect and I know you're thinking to yourself gee that's going to be a lot of tail ends. You don't actually break your yarn at the end. So what happens is you start the black you go down and back and then you change over. You leave the black just hanging off to the side and then with the white go down and back and then just drop the white and then pick up the black again. So in one side of here the yarn is actually carrying up with these particular ideas until you get to the solid. So if you're thinking there's gonna be a lot of tail ends there truly isn't because of the way that it's done. And finally one more thing, sorry about that. I just wanted to make sure that you get off to a good start. So you're going to see here is the color layout that it has within this afghan. You can see it's actually looking pretty neat and it's really quite wonderful. So you can just see like the blues and the yellows and the whites and etc. and how they play together. So you really it looks completely different here than it does on the sample but that I think that's kind of neat too. So if you're looking at the make your counts you'll notice that all the motifs have a number. So you make motif 15 of these and this shows you how to do it. Motif number three and you make 12 of those and motif number one was also 15 as well and it depends on your color coordination as well. So make sure you assign your colors and then make sure you make the correct number as well. So let's get you started. All of these squares start with the striping first. So you have to choose your first two colors that you want to do the striping. The striping is all the same within the entire afghan. So every striping is the same. So let's uh, create a slip knot to begin using your six millimeter size J crochet hook. Put it into your slip knot and you are going to chain a total of three. So one, two and three. So let's start on row number one. It says two half double crochets in the third uh, in the third chain from the hook. So just count back to the third. So it's actually the very beginning one that you started. I go into the back loops of my chains generally when I do it. So I'm going to put um, two half double crochets into that first one. So one and two. And so with the skipping of the other two chains that were there and these two that gives you a total of three half double crochets. Let's turn our work and go for row number two. So row number two we're going to chain two and we're going to one and two and that counts as a half double crochet when you're doing the increase and then you're gonna go into the same one that is in where it's coming out of and you're going to half double crochet one more time. So this is the same as putting two half double crochets into the first stitch in order to get the expansion for your square. So now you're going to do a half double crochet in the next stitch available to you and there's only one more stitch which is the first one right here and you're going to put two half double crochets in there. So you're gonna go one and two. 
just like so. But now you can't finish the second one. You have to make sure you get your next color up. And so we grab our secondary color. I create a slip not just out of um, peace of mind. And what you want to do is take that secondary color like so and pull it through that final. So then that third, that next color is ready to go and leave these tail ends for you later. So let's turn our work and go for row number three. Let's turn our work and go for row number three. And what I would consider doing as well, see this uh, the red straggler? I would consider bearing it underneath. Saves you sewing in the ends later. So I would do that for that. So that's the straggler that you're, that I'm talking about. So you're going to, with this color, you're going to chain two which counts as a half double crochet and you're going to half double crochet into the same one where it appear, where it's coming out of. So then take that straggler and just put it up over top of it and then that will get stuck into position. So you're just gonna half double crochet yourself across until you get to the very final and what are you gonna do in the very final? That's right, you're gonna put two half double crochets into that one. So I'm just moving my way across just like so and in the very final one Okay, it looks like a turning chain. I wanna put in two half double crochets. So that is your expansion. So that was row number three. So we're gonna turn and work and we're gonna take that color back to the original where we started with where this yellow is just sitting over here. So to begin again, we're going to chain up two and that counts as a half double crochet and we're gonna do a half double crochet in the same stitch. So now you got two in that one and now you're gonna half double crochet yourself back to the next corner or to the next side. What are you gonna do in the very final one? You're gonna put in two half double crochets but we're gonna transfer that second one back to yellow in order to be ready. Okay, so the next one is the next one here so I don't finish it. Sorry, I need to put two into that, that last one. So one and this will be the second one and I wanna transfer it back to yellow. So I drop this red, just get it out of the way and I bring back up the yellow and just l l firmly but not uh, creating any tension, just pull it through and just make sure this line is nice and uh, firm right here. Okay, and so then you're ready to go for any other rows. So we have to continue just to go back and forth using these colors in order to get this to go. So the yellow that we see here is the equivalent of the black and there's three rows of that. So it says continue until the a, a pattern is worked as established. So let's just turn our work and just repeat on what we know. So we're gonna chain up two and we're going to half double crochet into the first one and then we have double crochet into all the rest until we get to the very final. And what are we gonna do in the final one? That's right, we're gonna put in two half double crochets. I just realized that my colors kinda look like McDonald's. <laughs> Whoops. Okay, so here we go and the last one here you're gonna put in two half double crochets. Okay, and then we turn our work. So we only change our color on the one side. We turn our work, go up the other, go up. So chain two counts as a half double crochet and then half double crochet in the first one. Okay, I'm just gonna pull some slack. And half double crochet in each going across. So when you get to the very end, what are you gonna do? You're gonna change your colors once again. So the very last one, which is next one, is gonna be the first one, it'll be a full yellow. And then we go back into the same one again, but this time we pull through with the red. So drop that yellow now, just tug up on this red one here and use it to pull through and make sure that it's running up pretty much snug but not overly tight and then turn your work and go up again. So let's uh, review the photo and just I'm gonna leave the rest for this striping to you in order for you to get that square done. So in the photograph the black is my yellow and then the white is the red. So you can see that here's the number of times that you have to repeat this back and forth. So you need the total of 
of three of these yellow, or sorry, four of these yellows and three of the reds in between. And what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna get this part done now because I've shown you how to do it and then I'll meet you back up after I get this last section in here. So there'll be another yellow in there as we begin to do it. Now I would technically film in black and white here on camera. The problem is you can't see the white because of my background and the black is too dark for you to see the stitches. So that's why I've opted to change the colors just like you see it. So let's uh, uh, bring you back up then up over here. So I will continue off camera and then I'll meet you back here in just a moment. So I'm coming up to the end of the square being as big as it's gonna be and I'm on the final color uh, before transitioning to the solid. So I'm coming into the very last. So this time what I want to do is that I want to um, begin and I want to join the next color of the of the, the solid. So I'm coming into the last one here and I'm gonna grab one more color creating a slip knot. So this is the new solid color that I'm about to use and I'm gonna finish this, this stitch. So before I move on what I wanna do is that I need to release off the other yarns that are currently in, pl in position. Now when you go to sew you're gonna cover right over, over top. So when you whip stitch you whip right over top of these um, dragging strings. But we have to do finish this other strings that are currently sitting in position which includes the yellow and the red. To do that I'm just gonna trim my yarn here and this is when you require a darning needle and I'm gonna show you how to do that next. So let's get rid of our loose ends. So we have the yellow that needs to be here and what I want to do is that I also wanna get rid of the uh, starting ones over here as well. So we had red and yellow when we started. So to do this process it's really quite simple. Just throw it through a darning needle. It's the best way to go. You never have to worry about it falling out on you. And then all you're just gonna do is just you're just gonna drag the yarn through the stitch work. So just drag it underneath and you're gonna drag it forward. I'm just gonna pull that out. Just gonna drag it forward. Okay, so you don't wanna apply too much tension to it. You want it to keep it uh, so it's still pliable. And then you come back in the other direction just through a slightly different path. So two. and then just kind of give it a tug and then go back three, three times. So you wanna do that three times back and forth. This is my general way of getting rid of loose ends. So for the few minutes it takes you to do this, it's peace of mind for the future that you'll never have to worry about these ever falling out. So what I want you to do, see it's completely gone. So what I want you to do is do the same with the red and also do the same with the first two colors that you did. I'll be back in just a moment. So here's where we are. So you're gonna notice that sometimes the tension makes these not look like they're square. So just yank on it to, just to pull it out just to make sure that it's gonna relax for you. Do that prior to starting the decrease. It, it'll just be easier for you. So I've already changed my color in the last uh, time I came through here. I've just now tucked in all my loose ends. So now it's completely easy, to, easy peasy to go. So we're going to then continue this color now but we're going to start the, doing the decrease and it's a solid color. And to do this then we're just going to chain up two and in the decrease the chaining of two does not count as anything. So when we did the first time when we were increasing it counts as a double crochet. In the decrease it counts as nothing. So what we want to do is that we want to make the first two stitches come together. So wrap that hook. Let me just come in a little bit closer for you so you can see that more detail here. So I'm gonna wrap the hook and I'm going to come into the first stitch where this is originating out of and coming in and pull through. And then I want to just leave the straggler down on top for this particular row, get it out of the way and then wrap the hook and going into the next stitch, pull through and now you got five loops on your hook. Just wrap and pull through all five just like that. So now you're still going to half double crochet yourself along the edge or the, along the row and continuing to bury that loose end as you go. Just easier, one last thing to be able to sew in later if you don't want to to do that. If you want to sew it's up to you. This way works just as good. So I'm just gonna, I buried it enough. I'm just going to keep on going. So my goal is, is by the time I get to the other side is that I wanna reduce the final two stitches. And you're going to reduce yourself back to a point at this, uh, at this time. So you just have to keep on going back and forth and, and decreasing on the first part of the row and the last part of the row. And as you do that you're eliminating stitches every time you're doing a pass. 
So the neat thing about this is that you're actually at the maximum width at this moment. So as you progress even further you're going to be eliminating stitches with every pass therefore it's gonna get quicker and quicker for you to finish the square and that's one of the addictions of corner to corner within crochet. So when we get close to the edge that I'm about to do just right there I say it, so I have two final stitches left. So I'm gonna wrap the hook going into the next one, pull through, wrap the hook going into the final turning chain, pull through. You have the five loops back on there, pull through all five. And those two stitches just became one. So to keep moving up in this particular pattern, we start again, we chain two, counts as nothing because we're in the decrease and we're gonna bring the first two together. So just wrap, pull through, wrap and going into the next one, pull through, pull through all five loops and you're going to have to double crochet yourself across and I'll meet you on the other side in just a moment. So as you finish the final one just watch for that last one that's right here and you want to make sure that the last two become two together. So you see how that's one stitch right here and this is one there. So we're just gonna go right in pull and then wrap it and going into the last one. So you got five loops again pull through all five and you're done. So you turn your work you chain up two counts as nothing and then put the first two together all over again and then half double crochet yourself back. So what I want you to do is that I want you to continue to get this to the point and uh, just keep on reducing and you're going to notice that your pattern is starting to grow in the uh, directions up towards the point. So you see that you're gonna end up over here at this point. So you're gonna keep on getting na more narrow. So maybe there in just a moment and I'll see you so I'm coming up near to the end and you're going to notice that you need to shape this thing. Um, you would do, need to do that anytime I've done any kind of designs like this you always have to. So it's not something if you're seeing it being more of a diamond shape that's not unusual that it's just the, the nature of the stitch. So what we're going to do is come up right to the end and you're going to chain up um, two. It doesn't count as anything. So what I need to do is put the final three together and uh, we're going to just start collecting them as you go. So instead of two together it's gonna be three together and then you're gonna have all of these loops. So you got two, four, six and seven loops. Pull through all of them and then you're good to go. You're done. Just like that. So just what I would do is just pull through just one final one just to make sure you got that all in there. You have a nice uh, tight join and what I'm gonna do then is take my darning needle and I'm just going to finish it off. So you're just gonna need to just kind of stretch things out to get it to be the as closest to the square. Once you start joining these things together they'll work out anyway uh, but right now you, if you're having a, uh, an upside, a lopsided look it's, it's not abnormal. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a second one that I'm going to crochet real quick up off screen and then I'll be back. I'll show you how to whip stitch these together and then I'll show you how to do the border as well. So now I'm back and I've done two samples as you can see on both sides here. So what makes this work is that I talked about that it's being joined together with black yarn. What makes it work is that you see the white here in the shadows allow the black to really be hidden. So in other photos you can see that this really is hard to tell exactly what color has been used. So black has been used even in colors that you would never expect it. So um, just look really carefully and you can see it. So what I would wanna do for this is that you'll notice that black touches every side. So you see that the blacks hit this white and also the blacks hit the yellow and the blacks hit uh, what other colors there are, there are the blue just like you see. So it really becomes kind of the color that to look for. So in my case I would actually consider doing red. Now you're gonna notice that these are gonna be looking like they're kind of weird in the sense that, but once they start sewing together they start pushing together perfectly. So you could actually have a lot of fun with the different colors on depending on how you've uh, done a turn just like so. You could do it like that as well or you could do it exactly how it's showing in the picture as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to whip stitch this and I'll be back in just a moment. To whip stitch what I like to do is create a slip knot on the one side of the sewing strand just like you see. So it's a, it's a slip knot and on the other side I want to put in my darning needle. I like to when I do my whip stitching I really don't mind it. Some people really can't stand it. Uh, I'm not one of those people. So what I wanna do is I wanna start off on the one side on the one and I wanna kinda match it to the closest I can on the other side and bring it across. This is called a whip stitch what I'm about to show you. So I'm gonna pull it through but I'm not gonna pull it all the way through. I'm gonna stop at the slip knot that I have right here and I'm going to insert my needle into that. 
So now that I have that done is that it's locked into position. So using this strand here if you have any yarns that are carrying up you go right around the yarn. So for example on this side here I have the yarns that are, are coming over. So when I go to whip stitch if I were to do it I go in and around so that it traps these into position just like there. So what I'm gonna do is come back to the sample that I'm the, the first sample and then go back to the other side and again leaving that straggler down on top allows it to get hidden in position really quite well. So just pulling it through and then just sometimes I like to lead that yarn to come over right in the very beginning and just going right up and over. So in this case I'm using gray as my color to sew. So now that I have that so what I wanna do is I wanna keep an eye on the base area over here to make sure that it kinda matches and then because you're sewing all these together then you can really reef on it later to really pull its shape. So just come one side to the other and I wanna bury that starting strand if you would like to do it that way for about two inches. Just kinda keep pulling it so it's snug and now going into the red section here. So I'm gonna let this straggler drop after this last one here. I'm gonna push it to the other side so I don't out of sight out of mind. So now I'm just gonna continue just to kinda equally space it as much as I can for the whip stitching. Again keeping an eye on this bottom corner. So if the bottom corner ends up being like this you know that it's off balance. So you just wanna kinda keep an eye on it and adjust as you go like so. So I just continue to whip stitch down the side. So actually this gray works out really well too for, for that as well. So if you don't wanna use as many colors as the pattern is suggesting again pattern uh, colors are like recipes. If you don't like a certain part of the recipe if you're allergic to nuts or whatever you just leave it out but you can probably still enjoy your dessert at the same time. So let's talk about the border because I'll show you that in just a moment as I whip stitch. So the border um, if you notice the afghan is not a square afghan it's actually um, rectangle but if it was square it wouldn't matter either because the reality is, is that you're just gonna equally space your first revolution all the way around and then you are going to then um, um, start the other two rounds based on that. So the nice thing about that is that there's no specific count on uh, going all the way around is just basically equally spacing and the reason for that as well is that there you can't really get your equal spacing when they're when you're going into the side. So you just have to kind of just eye it out and make it look good. So I wanna go right to the point to the point right here on the bottom. Let me show you how to finish that off. So what I wanna do is that I wanna come back over and I wanna kinda just tie it into a little bit of a knot so to lock it and then I'm gonna turn it over. Okay, so you can see the other side. Look at this. Isn't that neat? So you can see the other side it looks more cleaner than the other side. So what I wanna do and you might wanna commit to that like to keep in the one side equal. What you wanna do is just do is drag the same color through the color that is already existing. Remember dragging it through three times. So one and two through a different path but very close to it and that's because it's going through a different set of fibers so it can lock onto itself. So that was number two and finally back in the other direction for number three. So going back for three times is a charm. So you wanna sew all your motifs together before you obviously complete the border and in the next part of this tutorial I'm going to show you how to do that. So once you start joining these you'll notice that it's kinda like a little bit offset right now but that's because it just needs a little bit of shaping. So what you can just do is start reefing on it, start getting its shape and then as soon as you start joining other squares you'll notice that it will come more in line as well. So without further ado let's uh, begin to do the border next. So let's begin to do a border. I'm going to use the same color so um, black was the it's supposed to be my yellow etc. So I'm going to use that color as my starting and I'm just going to start off in any corner. So you'll have a lot bigger sample done obviously if you're going all the way around and you wanna go right into a corner. So you have a choice. You can either do your corner right away or you can do it at the end. So if you just join it with a slip stitch, chain up two, okay? And that counts as a half double crochet and if in, you just double crochet or half double crochet two more times 
into that same stitch you'll end up with a corner. So you can either do that now or you can just wait until the end and now you're just gonna equally space your half double crochets all the way down the sides. So every corner is going to get um, a total of three half double crochets. So just equally space it. You notice I'm not counting. I'm just looking and eyeing it up. Now if you're going up over top of these uh, carrying over strings just go right up over top of them. They get stuck underneath and you should be able to bury those completely as you go. So keep an eye on those as well and what I'll do is I'll meet you at the first corner. As you're making your way across once you jump over a motif just jump right over. Don't do anything special there. Just continue to go across as if it's one complete solid uh, edge which it currently is. So you just wanna make sure that you just go right up over top. So don't do anything special as you do the join. So as you come up to the edge of the corners, the corners will always be the same with three half double crochets inside to allow you to turn that corner and then you just immediately keep on going around the corner into the next section just equally spacing your half double crochets. So please do that same thing every time you hit a corner and I will see you back at the very beginning. So as I come all the way back around remember that I started you with three half double crochets in the beginning one and because of that that's already done. So we just want to join to the top of the beginning chain two that we had started with. So we're actually done this color. So what we're going to do is we're gonna bring back another color so it can just be one of the solids. In my case I've only been using grays today. So I'm gonna bring that color back and then I'm gonna show you round number two. I'm doing the edging and I'm just weaving in my current color now. Just weaving it in and out and next time we go around this will get stuck into position underneath this next round. If you want to use a darning needle you can certainly do that as well. So I'll see you back here in just a moment. We'll start off in the corner. So let's grab our next color and we're gonna start in the corner. The corners are gonna get uh, three uh, double crochets this time. So in the third one or in the middle one of the three that you had before and it can be any corner that you start this with just uh, join it. Okay with a slip stitch. Chain three counts as a double crochet and I want you to double crochet three more times or sorry two more times into there. So the corners will always be three double crochets and all you're just gonna do on this round is that's just one double crochet in each of the half double crochets you did except for the middle one of the corner then you'll put in three. So I'm gonna leave this entire round for you because it's that simple to do and I'll see you back here at the beginning. So as I come back around I am just finishing up and we've already done our three double crochets right in the corner one and we're just gonna come and do that last one here and then we're going to join it to the top of the beginning chain three. So as per this pattern there's actually one more uh, round and I'm bringing back the yellow one more time and the yellow is going to be half double crochets all the way around. So I'm just gonna weave in my edge, uh, sorry my, my tails at this moment. If you wanna use a darning needle it's up to you. So let's begin our next color. This is the final round. I'm gonna start off with a slip knot go into the middle one of the group of the three double crochets that is your very corner and you might as well start off in your corner as well. So let's chain two this time that counts as a double a half double crochet and half double crochet two more times into the same one. So now you have a total of three. So you're going to just put in one half double crochet in each stitch all the way around on your next corners that you'll end up with is that you'll put three into the corner just like you see and then continue to half double crochet and please do that all the way around. I'll see you at the end of this round. So as you come all the way back around you are just going to join it to the top of the first chain two that you started with and you're done because you've already did your first corner as you went around. Just like that. So then just join it and then what I would do this is your final round. There's nothing more beyond this. What I would recommend is just grabbing a darning needle and just using that technique of going back and forth three times underneath the stitches. Let me just throw it through real quick just to say that I did do it and sometimes I turn off the camera and say I'm gonna do it and I don't um, because it's just a sample anyway. So I just go through just underneath. Don't go on the outside edge so that you don't impede the edge look and then we're going to go back in the other direction for a second time. So you will notice that the squares settled down as soon as they started joining together but it probably does need a little bit of blocking because of the t uh, style of the technique and I'll be back in a minute just to refresh what we've done today. Recap. 
So here's what we ended up with today and you can see it's joined together. The outside borders are in. The other side looks just as good. Well, it looks like I gotta get rid of this loose tail that I buried underneath but it looks amazing and this is how you do the tilt a whirl crochet afghan by yarnspirations.com and until next time have a great day and we'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.